Ah, customs. The wild west of Tarkov, where the chads go to chad and the rats go to rat. But that's not what this video is all about. It's not about PvP and chads and hiding in bushes and fighting everybody. No. This video is about being the hungry little mouse that you are and going after all that sweet loot. So if you want to fill your pockets and your bags like this, follow along. This loot guide is going to start here at Trailer Park, but this is going to work no matter where you spawn on the map. Uh, we're going to start here at Portable Cabin. In the little junk pile, we're going to go look. There's always some good loot there. I found everything from graphics cards to thermites. Now we're just going to follow the road through the uh, containers here, what are these storage units. Uh, and there's going to be several here we're going to go into to go ahead and loot. Now if you've played customs, you might know this area pretty well. Uh, this is typically, most people call this like one of the worst spawns, but this is actually my favorite spot to spawn. Uh, because there's a ton of loot right from the start, uh, and it always seems to be of high quality. Now we'll hop the wall and we'll head down here to the first open container up here on the left. Uh, and now this is a great spot you'll see here on the shipping rack. Uh, a lot of times I'll find armor repair kits there as well as uh, graphics cards and things up on the top shelf. There's a dead body to search as well. Now throughout the video, you're gonna see a little bit of a map pop up like we had in the beginning there. Uh, I'm gonna put the link in the description, but that's from a website called mapgenie.io. That's a great interactive map to follow. Uh, it's, even, it's actually how I learned Tarkov and learned all these maps so well, because uh, it shows everywhere from stash spots to, to quest items to where bosses spawn. Uh, but we're gonna work our way through this, uh, this little storage container area here and uh, loot. Now you'll see I skip the horse uh, one of the biggest things that I want people to take away from this video uh, is that not everything is worth grabbing, uh, but definitely filling up squares, you know, in your inventory is worth it. Uh, but as you know, again, not everything is worth grabbing and sometimes the weight of it might, uh, you know, make it worse to actually carry it around. Now, next we're gonna head over to Big Red here. Now this is completely optional being that I use Tarcone's key uh, to go into Tarcone's office and loot that. Now I want you to understand you don't need any keys for the rest of this route. This is the only place I go that requires a key. So if you don't want to use a key, just go ahead and, you know, kind of ignore this part and we're almost out of here. So we're going to see, you know, it's, it's not even necessary really to hit. Um, but I do check this jacket and I do check the trash can way back when, when I first started playing back in like patch 11, uh, you used to find graphics cards in that trash can. So it's always worth checking. Uh, and then checking these computers here, we see, look at that, a graphics card. So uh, totally worth coming up here. You probably already have the key from the quest. And if not, it's super cheap on the flea. I think it's under 40K, so it is totally worth it. Now, two optional places to hit, especially if you're doing a scav run, is that blue uh, little office, as well as there's a container down there that's open and there's a weapon box. I feel like every time I do a scav, they're completely untouched. Um, so it's always a good opportunity to get a little bit of extra loot. Now, again, you can totally do this entire run as a PMC or a scav, and it can be completely done in reverse. Now, I typically try to avoid RUAF roadblock or RUAF roadblock, as you might hear me call it, uh, because it typically does get a little bit hot here. Uh, but I like to come check this pallet if I can, because it does spawn an armor repair kit or a weapon repair kit. Um, and then I just simply just head straight down the road there. I kind of hug through here, through the tree line, uh, just so I could pop out through this little wall and check uh, where you might remember the quest truck here for, I believe it's Tiger Safari. Uh, there does spawn a weapon repair kit in the back sometimes, as well as you can peek construction on top of that pallet of bricks for an armor repair kit as well. Now, not, every, not all of these are worth grabbing, obviously, depending on where you're at in the raid or how much space you have, the, especially the weapon repair kit. It's not, you know, it doesn't sell for a lot, usually 70 to 100, and a, you know, the amount of weight and space it takes up isn't really worth it at that price. But we'll head over to the tree line here. Uh, watch that hill. A lot of people hide in those bushes to try and get uh, shooter born in heaven because you can peek past ice cream. Uh, but next we'll just run through that tree line and then head straight over to this container. Now, fun little play tip there is to actually wait 
uh, before dropping down to go under that pipe. Wait until your character takes about two steps, you know, like running against the pipe and then drop and it'll kind of launch you forward. And then that helps you kind of, uh, you know, go under there faster. Now, just follow the line here through the back of the bus station and you'll see a whole bunch of big bushes here and up on the left here, we're gonna have a stash right there. Now this one seems to always be unhit whenever I, uh, whenever I play and do a raid. So it usually yields pretty good results. Next, we'll just shift 90 degrees and follow the green wall here right up to the pipe. And there's gonna be a bucket right here in the tires. Watch out for sniper scab, but you can usually loot this without any issues, especially if he's not up. Uh, there will typically be a couple scabs on the road and then hopefully no players. Now we'll just turn and head straight towards the train tracks here. I like to follow the tree line to kind of stay hidden a little bit. Um, and we just wanna make our way through this uh, you know, broken wall here. Now right at the, the pipe there, or pole, sorry, there's gonna be a bucket and we can search that. And same concept here, we're just gonna run straight through, go up over the train tracks and then hug that tree line. We'll see here, uh, we're coming up on power, uh, but we wanna hit this little bucket right up against the wall. Again, this is another spot that I see is typically unlooted. Now again, all of this can be done in reverse or as a scab, not necessarily as a PMC. This is the same kind of scab route I usually take as a scab, uh, and I usually come out with about four to 500K in gear. Now we've gone up the hill to power here. I always check that white container. Um, a lot of people hide in there and kind of camp and uh, wait for people to pop up. Uh, but I like to just come in here and hit. Now you don't have to hit this. This does sometimes get kind of heavy in the PVP. Um, and so you don't need to come up here, but there's a lot of loot here. We've got items on the boxes. There's a lot of boxes here, as well as a few hidden uh, caches. Wow, uh, so we'll come over to this truck here and just on the other side of this truck There's a blue fence. We'll hit the toolbox first, uh, but there's a bucket hidden inside of a bush uh, That usually is never hit I don't think many people know about that and then I head straight up over here to what's passage between rocks uh, Extract just to the right you see these bushes right here. There's gonna be a hidden cache behind that again This is another one that's almost never hit. Uh, I always call it old faithful uh, last what last wipe I found it was like the very first my very first raid I found a slick in there um, and it was so it was day one I had a slick and so I've forever kind of coined that old faithful now we'll head in that direction there and go right to that tree I call that naked tree but there's a hidden cache here again this is another one that most people don't know about and it seems to always be uh, untouched now we'll just turn and head straight over to military CP uh, again there's gonna be a hidden cache, watch out for anybody camping, but uh, this is a great way to learn the map as well, running this route. You'll kind of learn all the little nooks and crannies and some areas that a lot of people don't go to, but sometimes you'll find some you know, really heavy PVP in this area. And again, there uh, tends to be a lot of good loot left untouched. Now we'll head down here to checkpoint. This is kind of, you know, scav checkpoint area where there's a sniper scav usually right there up on that tower. Uh, but we want to head straight up to that white wall there and right past the blue container, there is a bush here and there's another hidden cache uh, right inside of there. Again, this is another one of those that I see almost never is hit. Um, and it usually has some pretty good loot in it. Now I know that everything's dynamic loot, so I'm saying, oh, there's usually good loot in there. And of course it could be a roll of the dice, but um, we typically, you know, like to think of it as is not always the case. I, I do find some good stuff in there as well. Um, now you'll see me dropping items and grabbing other ones. Now that's because I kind of know the value of items. If you're still new to the game and learning uh, how much items sell for it, I, I, tip, I highly recommend kind of keeping track of like, uh, you know, what do things go for on the flea? What's the average? Uh, just check the flea every so often for like high value items like nuts and bolts and screws, things that you use in your hideout, things people are going to craft with. Uh, that's going to be the best way to make some money. Now just come clear your corners here through this wall and come right up to this, uh, this little wagon here and watch out for that tree. Now this next stash here at admin gate, completely optional to hit. I honestly don't typically hit that because I'm terrified of who could be in that tree right there at ZB11. And uh, you know, here, I'll show you why. I'm so afraid of that. Oh my God, I looked at the tree too. So now I just put a few rounds into the tree every time, you know, just to be safe. Now there's a couple bushes here you'll see me shooting at, just kind of throwing out some shots there. 
uh, because I've been shot from those bushes as well. I've even, you know, watched some big streamers, uh, you know, get hit by like a five stack of a guy in the tree, a guy in the bush up on the railroad, and a guy in the other bush in the far corner there, as well as there was another guy waiting for him inside of ZB1011. Now you can come over to this building. Again, this is optional. There's a bucket here. I'll usually try to hit this one because again, it never seems to be hit whenever I whenever I come to extract. Um, and you know, obviously I could say it again. There's usually some good stuff in there, um, but just watch these bushes, man. That bush right there, I've gotten shot from before. Um, I've even had somebody just right there inside the gate waiting right at like a third step. Uh, always clear that, you know, tree there. And then again, there's uh, a stash in that bush right there, but I've had people just sitting in that bush waiting uh, as well as you can go inside the building and loot as well. I found graphics cards in there, but here we see I found some sugar and then just head to extract again. Be careful. Uh, I've, I've seen everything from people sitting on the stairs to people just tucked right around the corner. I always shoot out the light, uh, you know, second try, but uh, kind of clear that with a flashlight, put a couple rounds in that corner just in case and, you know, head to your extract and get out. Now, again, this was an offline raid, but I did add up the total of everything we found, and it was 1.4 million running this route right here. For watching, hopefully you liked the route. Hopefully you liked the video. Don't forget to subscribe, leave a like, leave a comment, go run the route, leave a comment. Let me know how much you make. Let me know how it went. I know, again, this was an offline raid, so you didn't really see me have to fight anybody to get out alive. Uh, but the idea and concept is still there, especially if you're a scav, you're going to probably just run right through it and be able to grab everything without any issues. People tend to extract pretty early these days, I've noticed. So uh, you'll run into little issues uh, as a scav. Now, if you like this or you want to see anything else, go ahead and leave a comment, leave a thumbs up. Let me know uh, what you'd like to see. And I'm probably going to make a uh, video soon on those. We talked about the armor repair kit spawns and the weapon repair kit spawns uh, running through the map and kind of pointing out all the different locations that those can spawn. So hope to see you soon.